Welcome back to another episode of the Godly Dating 101 podcast. Tavares here, and a little bit of an interesting episode because I'm talking about rejection, which we will all experience at some point in our life. I know a lot of people don't believe that it's a part of life, but hey, no matter how pretty you are, somebody's not going to find you attractive, or no matter how great your resume is, somebody's not going to hire you, or no matter how anointed you may think you are. You may not even get that position in the church. You know, so today I just want to talk a little bit about rejection and how it's not that big of a deal. Um, so go ahead and like, subscribe, share with your friends, all of those things. But most importantly, go to Amazon, GollyDating101book.com, wherever you go to find books and purchase our book. It is available for pre-order. I know many of you are waiting until the day it comes out, but if you pre-order it now, you get it the day it comes out. Um, so go ahead and support the channel that way. And yeah, we appreciate you guys. Um, that That is uh, something my wife and I work really hard on, and we're sure it's a great resource that maybe you may not like it, but somebody in your church may need it or in your family. So go ahead and consider that um, buying one, two, or 40 copies, you know, however the Lord leads you. But <laughs> I want to talk a little bit about rejection because I think this is so normal, but yet it is so crippling. Um, there are some people that I believe God wants to elevate them, but they allowed what they experienced in the past to hinder them, hinder their emotions from growing, hinder their spiritual life from growing, hinder them from getting into relationships because they're so um, stagnant after, you know, someone shutting them down, rejecting them, someone saying, no, nah, you're not really my type. And unfortunately, many of us, instead of seeing it as God's redirection, we've allowed rejection to become our identity. I'm not that beautiful. I'm not that handsome. No one will ever hire me. No one will ever like me. I'm so this, I'm so that. And we're always viewing things in a negative light, but I don't think that's how God wanted you to view it. So I want you to understand from today's episode that rejection is a part of life. And because it is a part of life, you shouldn't view it as something that is fatal. Just because that relationship didn't work out doesn't mean that God isn't able to give you a relationship that does work out. Or just because someone doesn't see your worth doesn't mean that no one will ever see your worth. So I want to talk a little bit about that because I want us to see this as a bit of a detour. Um, see this as a bit of a bump in the road as though... It's just not happening today, but it doesn't mean that God will never answer. So today I want to talk a little bit about, um, we, we may mention the various people in the scriptures, but I want to talk a little bit about Joseph because he experienced, I believe, the type of rejection that many of us would probably find the most devastating because he was rejected by his family. And when you're rejected by people who are the closest to you, that's when it hurts the most. And this man, I'm sure when he was rejected, if you don't know the story of Joseph, it begins in um, Genesis 30, and you'll be able to study it and read it there. But Joseph was given a vision of God, of the great things God is going to make him do, but he didn't show him the in-between. And because of Joseph telling his family members, hey, you know, I see God doing this. Hey, I see you guys, you know, serving me. It led to him being hated, criticized, ridiculed by his family members, because everybody's not going to see God's vision for you. But this guy was rejected by those he loved and ended up putting him in slavery. That ended up with him being in a pit, with him being in prison. It led to a lot of things not going Joseph's way that I'm sure he wouldn't have even said anything if God would have told him that's what the outcome would have been. But we see that it worked out in the long run because of his obedience to God, because of his trust in God, because of his faith. So I'm going to read these few verses. and I want to talk a little bit about how we should um, view rejection. Genesis 50, 50 verses 19 through 21 says, And Joseph said unto them, Fear not, for am I in the place of God? But as for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good, to bring to pass as it is this day, to save much people alive. Now therefore fear you not. I will nourish you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spake kindly unto them. Now many of us, when we're rejected, we're not speaking very kindly to some people. We're not, we're bashing people on the internet. We're not being kind. We're not loving people. You know, Jesus saying to bless your enemies and do good to them that, that despitefully use you. And people that curse you, Jesus is setting a high standard. But is that what we as believers normally do? No, we allow the rejection to cause us to hate people. We, they rejected me, so now I don't want them at my church. They rejected me. They unfollowed me, so now my world is crumbling. You know what I mean? It's so many foolish things that we unfortunately do in our immaturity. But I want you to see a few things um, out of Genesis. So number one, what I need us to see is that you should choose not to insult them. Now, Joseph had every right to be upset with his um, family members, every right to be upset to the point that 
he could punish them because you're the reason why I, I didn't get the opportunity to be raised in my family. I didn't get the opportunity to see um, Benjamin born, mother um, dying, and all these things, you know, it's like it's so much that he didn't get to experience um, because of people pushing him away, but he chose not to insult them. Now, a lot of you, especially the ladies listening to this podcast, a lot of you know, <laughs> if you're on YouTube, you could definitely comment that you've experienced that. But when you tell a guy you're not interested or a guy's cat calling you, hey, little mama, hey, girl in the red dress. But you see that the moment you're, I'm not interested or please leave me alone. You ugly anyway. So, you know, what I mean? maybe you guys have never experienced that. Um, but I've seen it so many times where the girl mentions she's not interested. And all of a sudden, the guy's calling her all kind of names. And I'm sure it happens in reverse as well. Um, ladies are so insecure when a guy, they're not used to a guy rejecting them. So they insult the guy. I know some ladies that have called guys, you know, he must be gay, you know, because I threw myself at him and he wasn't interested. Um, you know, maybe he just doesn't like you. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I want us to understand that Jesus was rejected. Um, the Bible says in John 1, 11 through 12, he came unto his own and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So even our, our Messiah, our Savior came to this world perfect. Um, nothing wrong with this guy, yet people that he came to show his love to didn't receive him. So I need us to understand none of us are spotless. There are going to be so many people that don't don't accept our message. I've already accepted that I'll never have the number one podcast, book, platform, whatever, because I understand I'm preaching a message that's going to be controversial. I'm preaching things that are going to cause people to leave sin alone, leave culture, um, culture's way of thinking and adapt to what God is saying. So I want us to understand that if I allowed rejection to define me, there would be no podcast, there would be no ministry, there would be no platform, any of those things, but I'm not allowing those who reject me to de determine the impact God wants to use in my life. And I believe many of us, we've internalized the rejection to the point that we no longer use our voice because no one liked our our, 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 um, our inspiration, our blog, our, our podcast, whatever it is. Now we say, well, that means I'm not called. Because I'm not going viral with the, the reels when I talk about Jesus, then that means God is not endorsing it. You know, I need you to understand that we don't do these things for God's applause. And bear in mind, this is rejection talking about in all aspects. Because there's many of you, well, you never got rejected by a man or a woman, but you may have felt rejected by the church. You may have felt rejected at school or by your siblings. I know we've experienced rejection in areas that we may not speak about, but I need us to understand that even Jesus was rejected. And when he was crucified, the Bible lets us know that his response was love and forgiveness. Father, forgive them for they know not what they're doing. So while they were choosing to, to show hatred and, 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 and no mercy to the king of glory, Jesus still said, you know, I'm going to still show love to these people because they don't know what they're doing. You know, and I want us to understand that he could have lashed out. He had every opportunity to lash out. He could have called in angels to do whatever. Jesus could have retaliated when they were beating him, but yet he chose not to. So I need us to understand because many of us, when we're insulted, we feel like we have to insult back. Or when we're rejected from a relationship, we feel as though we have to bash a person on social media. We feel as though when they dump us, we have to let everybody know how trash he is and all men are dogs and all women are this and that. But it's like, maybe you don't need to do that. Maybe you just need to be willing to accept that whatever God's plan is, then that's all you need. God's will, nothing more, nothing less, nothing else. Something I've always heard from a pastor growing up called um, Robert Stewart. But I want you to understand that the enemy wants you to become bitter. He wants the rejection to define you because he knows you can't be in God's will and be bitter at the same time. You see, a lot of us, we think the enemy's tactic is just to take us out of church. Mm -mm. The enemy doesn't mind you in church because better people in church cause other people to be better. The enemy doesn't need you um, to cheat on your spouse because he knows a bitter person is going to rot the marriage. He knows a bitter person is going to corrupt the workplace. A bitter person is going to corrupt your youth group. A bitter person is going to ruin the relationship. So all he needs is you to be a little bit bitter. Hebrews even speaks about, um, you know, a, a root of bitterness. So, oh man, I wish I would have thought of that, of that verse to show with you guys. But I want you guys to understand that the enemy does not need you outside of church. He just needs you to operate in bitterness because I can't speak the things of God while I'm operating from a bitter heart. I cannot allow... I cannot get into a healthy marriage with a bitter heart. 
if I'm constantly thinking my wife is going to reject me or because my, my husband said no, or my wife said no, I'm thinking about all the people that rejected me my entire life. And the trauma that that is reoccurring in my mind is that they don't love me because they said no. They don't love me because they didn't approve of everything I do. So that's what I'm telling you. The enemy knows that it's a matter of creating patterns in our mind because if he can corrupt your mind, he can hijack your lifestyle. Because our, our bodies follow what our minds are fixated on. And the enemy is always trying to, to target our minds. So we have to be careful. Genesis 15 and 21. He says, Now therefore fear you not. I will nourish you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spake kindly unto them. I'm sure Joseph was hurt. But he made a conscious decision that what you did to me is not going to determine my actions moving forward. So you, you caused me to feel one way. And I felt like no one loved me. But now the people that that you, I, say you're rejected from a church instead of you being that person who wants to create your gossip TikToks, instead of being negative towards them you're telling people oh that was an amazing church i just don't serve there anymore or you're rejected from a person oh that's a great girl you know she just wasn't interested instead of bashing them which i see happen so often i'm not sure why we always feel the need to do that but instead of doing that saying i'll bless them that's what the, Jesus is calling um, instructs us to do. When someone rejects you, how you respond is a reflection of your character, not of theirs. If you badmouth me in the comments and I comment back arguing with you, that shows how ins insecure I am. That shows how defensive I am. You can just look like an idiot by yourself. I didn't have to fuel the, the fire. If somebody does something to you and you have to retaliate, I'm telling you, it shows that we're not in control of our own emotions. And that's the reason why I'm, uh, I believe that talking about rejection is so important because so many of us, we have no power over what we believe and no power over what we do. And we have to be willing to fix that because we have to be able to control what we can control. We can only control how we respond, not for how people make us feel. But before I go forward in this video, I want to give a shout out to today's sponsor of the podcast. Now a word from our sponsor, Nutrafol. Now, a lot of people place a great emphasis on people losing their hair when they're 30, 40, 50 years down the line, but there are so many people losing their hair because of stress, anxiety, and all kinds of other genetic issues. So that's what I'm telling you guys about Nutrafol because a lot of companies, they help the sisters out, but a lot of you men out there, and your hairline is gone. Your hair is not operating the way it was back in your glory days. Nutrafol is for you. There's so many things that Nutrafol can help you with. They're the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement, uh, clinically shown to improve hair growth, thickness, and visible scalp coverage for both men and women. So now, if you're struggling, you know, you brush your hair and you might look like KD after, and it's not helping, I recommend Nutrafol. Clinical studies show that 72% of men and 86% of women see improved hair growth on their scalps. Hey, and you see the benefits on the screen if you're watching via YouTube. So Nutrafol link will be in the description box. You can grow thicker, healthier hair and support our show by going to Nutrafol.com and entering the promo code GODLY to save $15 off your first month subscription. This is the best. This is their best offer anywhere. And it's only available to U.S. customers at this moment. I'm sorry to everyone who's not in the U.S. But you also get, if you are in America, free shipping on every single order. So get $15 off at Nutrafol.com. That's spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com. And the promo code is godly. Another thing we like to do, um, I, I I don't know if it's everybody, but it's something that I found very common is we like to blame ourselves. So what I'll say to people who find themselves in this predicament is that you have to be willing to accept what happened, but you can't blame yourself for what someone else did. Now, there are a lot of you who feel as though, uh, and I've seen people compromise on what they believe scripturally because it's like someone will reject them because I'm not with all that holiness stuff that you got going on, which in turn leads to us shutting down what we believe doctrinally, scripturally in order to please them. Or we've seen people um, turn away from the faith, or we've seen people change their lifestyle. All, all it is is them trying to find ways to please people rather than God. So I need you to understand that if somebody rejects you, it's perfectly fine that it happened, you know, but you can't blame yourself. So there are too many times I've seen people blame themselves for things that were out of their control. Your parents got divorced, so you feel as though somehow it was your fault. Um, the person cheated on you. So now you're looking like, well, how, how did I not see the signs and how did I not meet the needs? Um, you know, friends, you know, that chose to gossip about it. Whatever it is, you can't, 
You can't control those things. What you have to do is be willing to control what you can't control. How people react to us and how people live their life is totally up to them. But it's human nature for us to feel as though we have to point out who was wrong when there was a breakup. And too often we blame ourselves and, you know, that means we're absolving them from whatever they did. So if you're in a relationship and somebody rejects you, they're like, I'm not interested anymore. That, that doesn't necessarily mean it was your fault. You know, bear in mind, if you're a person that listens to this podcast and you pretend you have no flaws and you don't address any of your issues, that's totally different. But if you're a person who realizes that, well, I had no control over it, they felt like, you know, they're better off without me. I've seen people drop somebody and get engaged the next week and it shows that clearly there was something going on before, you know, but you cannot control what other people do. You can only allow it, allow yourself to determine, are you going to spend time in God's presence to heal from it? Because you don't want to become bitter by what other people's actions are. The third thing you should know is that you should never try to change your mind. Now, too many of us, <laughs> when Joseph told his brothers about his dream for the second time, they hated him some more. I don't know if he thought things would have been better. You know, if I tell him, if, if you guys dislike me after I tell you one dream, maybe if I tell you a second. And that's why some people think he was probably prideful or, you know, you're just being young and dumb by rubbing it in their face. But I believe that when you're trying to prove your worth to someone, it can always backfire. Sometimes they resent you even more. For those of you who feel as though, ah, oh, well, they rejected me because of this, and now you're trying to convince them of your worth, that's when you run yourself into the hole. Because I've been rejected before. You know, you get rejected in relationships. Hey, but if what I was chasing would have worked out, I would have never met my wife. If what I what I thought was God's will for my life, trust me, when I look back now, hindsight is 2020. I realize. God, thank you. Um, many of us can, can comment that. God, thank you that you didn't allow me to get everything that I prayed for. Because there was some stuff that just was not wise. You know, been denied from jobs. But I wouldn't have been where I am now if, if I would have got complacent in some of those jobs that I would have applied for. You know, I wouldn't have been able to write a book that's going to impact millions if I would have stayed in the predicament. You know, even like the military. I felt as though one of the reasons we had to get out is because God was calling us to do certain things like this in ministry. And now... All of that is happening, whereas it's impacting hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people. But none of that happens from my comfort zone. So I had to be willing to get rejected from certain places. You know, many of us been denied. Like I mentioned earlier, you're probably a person who served so much in church and you thought you were going to get a certain position and you got denied that position. But you never would have reached where God was calling you to be if you were trying to stay along your path. And a lot of times we don't know God's will and we're so comfortable with what makes sense. Joseph was comfortable seeing the vision from God, but God never showed him the process. God never showed him who was going to reject him, who was going to do all of those things. So I need us to understand that even though God has great plans for you, he doesn't show you all the heartache that comes in the middle. He doesn't always show you the Job-like experiences that you're going to be frustrated with, but we need that. You know, so we have to be careful. Many times we make a, a skeptical of ourselves, I believe, when we're trying to prove who we are, trying to prove how anointed I am, try, trying to prove how beautiful you are. You see people, and and I think that's that one is probably more women than the fellas, but they compromise on things they're wearing. And social media, they get a little, you know, they feel the need to show off so much. And it's mainly in the sense of them trying to show how valuable they are. Or him, you know, the guy trying to look anointed. So it's like he has to try to post something that just makes him look deep. You know what I mean? And it's just like, there's no need for that because you'll belittle yourself, especially our ladies where the Bible mentions that, you know, when we find a good wife, you know, you're getting favor from God. So if you're a prize from God, bringing favor on our life, if you're jumping through hoops to be noticed, then you could be trying to convince someone of your worth that God never had for you. You know, so that's why you have to be careful because I think a lot of even men, we, we end up being insecure when we're trying to prove our worth to someone who will never truly appreciate it because they were never sent by God. You know, so we have to be careful of that. You know, and I've seen people <laughs> trying to co um, convince others that they're worthy of commitment. When in reality, when this person tells you, I'm not ready to date or I'm not interested, you should believe them. Don't wait till a year in and the person is like, yeah, I'm good. You know, and they just leave you to pretend you didn't have any clue. Yeah, because you forced them into the relationship, you know, and, you know, and unfortunately, there's also a other end of the spectrum, you know, that a lot of people don't want to admit that. Maybe the guy or the woman didn't lead you on. Maybe they got to know you and they're not interested. You know, there's nothing wrong with them not being interested, but you cannot allow it to hold you captive. So when you're a person who feels as though you're going through 
rejection, I'll say there's a few things you need to keep in mind. You need community. James 5 and 16 says, Therefore confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is very powerful in its effect. The Christian Standard Bible. This verse is talking about sin, obviously not dating, but I need you to understand healing came through community. What this verse is showing us is that if you are outside of community, no small group, no church, no godly believers around you, there are some, some of you guys that are wrestling with some issues that you're never going to get resolved from. You're never going to get healing from. So if you're rejected by someone you are in love with, really interested in, you know, maybe you guys were committed, godly community can help you through that healing process. And if you're rejected from somebody you know you were probably having premarital sex with, you know that can be way, way more difficult. Those soul ties, people don't believe soul ties are real, but those soul ties can be can be such a devastating effect on your life that you might need somebody in community to, to walk you through that process, especially things like counseling and therapy. The second thing is... I need us, for those of you who are frustrated that you've been rejected, take a deep breath and hear me out when I say this. Stop thinking so highly of yourself. I know some of you, you just think you're, you're God's gift to mankind and you're the prettiest thing that we've ever seen. You're the most handsome guy we've ever seen. I know, I know a lot of people that think like that, but you're not all that, fam. Calm down. The Bible says in Romans 12, 3, and obviously it wasn't talking about looks. You know, It was talking about faith. For by the grace given to me, I tell everyone among you not to think of himself more highly than he should think. Meaning, don't get too full of yourself. And as too many Christians, we're so full of ourselves. We're so elevated with our pride and ego. A lot of people, whenever you mention the first sin, they think of just Eve in a garden. But there was a serpent there. And whenever that serpent got there, I need us to understand that the first sin that happened in heaven was because of pride. There are too many prideful people in church. You can be prideful and God wants to fix that because your pride will get you kicked out of um, relationship with God. Your pride will get you so far away from God that you won't even know how to how to process that. But people can't handle rejection because they feel as though they're just God's gift. You know, you believe everybody wants you. So I, I need you to understand that if they don't see your worth, then it simply wasn't God's will for you. That's the way you should view it. Point blank, period. Don't allow pride to cause you to walk in bitterness or in low self-esteem. And the third thing I need us to understand is that you'd to love is to be vulnerable, right? So you have to be willing to place yourself back out there after you've healed. Not, do, not during the process where you, you're trying to heal. I believe that's what happened to Samson. We saw Samson in Judges 14. He was supposed to marry a woman. It didn't work out. And then they played him. And then Judges 16, the Bible mentions that now he's off with a prostitute. Judges 16, 1, Samson went to Gaza where he saw a prostitute and went to bed with her. And now... He hasn't stopped dealing with his madness. Time has just passed. Verse 4 says sometime later, he fell in love with a woman named Delilah who lived in the Sorek Valley. So as time progresses, he's just going from downhill to downhill to downhill with the wrong types of relationships. So I think in my head, he's a person who was dating without healing. He just wanted somebody that was going to make his flesh feel good. Um, you know, it led to the prostitute, it led to Delilah, and it led to his downfall. But many of us, we have to understand that if even Jesus was rejected, but yet he continued to show love, then it's perfectly fine for you to continue to be who God has called you to be. If you desire a marriage, you can't allow yourself to be crippled by what some guy said in the past or what some girl said in the past. And if we think about it, even the Israelites rejected Jesus. But in Romans 11, it shows us that their rejection led to our salvation because Israel, you know, stayed away from God. We're the engrafted saints, you know, where we're, the Gentiles were brought in. So now God is worried about the Gentiles and then he'll shift his focus back to the Jews after. But we have to understand that rejection is not a bad thing. It's only a bad thing when you allow it to define you. So we need to get out of that. And sorry that I had to do a quicker episode today. Our, our guest fell through because of the busyness of life. Um, but for those who did listen to the end, be sure to hit the link in the description box and pre-order that book. Comment below if you've ever had to handle rejection. And I'll see you guys next time. <laughs> Peace.